Hey, this is Adam from Edge. I'm here with Shalu Gupta. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Tell us what group you work in. So I work in the Windows security team for Microsoft. In particular, okay. I work for the BitLocker team. Okay. Um, I'm a program manager over in their team. Tell us about BitLocker. I know it came out of Windows Vista. Give me a little bit of background where it came from and what it's for. So BitLocker was first introduced in Windows Vista. Uh, it has two main purposes. One, it's an encryption uh, technology. Mm -hmm. So it encrypts your entire hard drive. Okay. Um, and in Windows Vista, what we also introduced was something called a secure startup. Uh, which means BitLocker would do a complete check of your system to make sure it's still safe, the integrity of the machine is maintained, before you even get to your logon screen. Um, so there are like two main edges of BitLocker, one being the secure startup and the other being uh, your hard drive is fully encrypted. Okay, so the hard drive is fully encrypted unless I have a key, you know, I can't boot some other operating system and read that correct, drive. Correct, correct. And then the, the system integrity, so what, we're looking for, for root kits or? So anything that has changed in the boot order or anything like that that has probably hampered or tampered your machine uh, will be caught by BitLocker. So you will, you'll be stopped right there. Okay. Um, and you'll need to enter a special recovery password, as we call it, to mm -hmm. go past that. Okay. Um, so anybody BitLocker mainly protects against a stolen laptop scenario. So if anybody were to grab hold of my laptop, do something with it, mm -hmm. um, try and boot from an, another CD or whatever it, it, you think of, um, would be probably stopped by BitLocker there. Okay. So I know you guys are working on some things for Windows 7. Mm -hmm. Tell me what, what's changed or added or, or new. So the main scenario for Windows 7 that we've enabled is using BitLocker for drives like these, which are removable data volumes, as okay. we call them. Mm -hmm. um, so as you know, a lot of important corporate sensitive information gets transported through these devices sure. and drives these days. So it's very important to protect these as well. Um, so that's our core Windows 7 scenario. We've enabled BitLocker on removable drives. We've given um, administrators the power to also force encryption on these drives. In other words, you can, uh, domain administrator can say, um, you know, this device should only get read writer access once it's encrypted. And if it's a non-encrypted or not protected with BitLocker, you will get a read-only read access to it. Okay. Um, there have been other various other improvements that we've made across the board. Okay. Uh, we've added a lot of group pol policy configurations to give um, administrators a better handle of BitLocker, and they can choose what methods to use, um, what recovery information they want, whether they want to force BitLocker on removable drives and such. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other major improvement that we've made is around deployment and configurations. Uh, we've dr drastically improved the setup experience with BitLocker, even for your main Vista scenario, which was your operating uh, drive encryption. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of setup improvements. Uh, the drive preparation tool, uh, which was out in Windows Vista, which right. is used to configure BitLocker, as you probably know, yep. um, is now integrated with the BitLocker setup itself. Okay. So you don't need any prior drive uh, preparation to be done. The BitLocker setup will do it all for you. Okay, and that was key, right? You had to have this second partition. Correct. So in Windows Vista, we needed two partitions to set up BitLocker on your OS drive. Uh -huh. In Win 7, we still need that two partition scenario. But first of all, the size of the second partition, or the system partition, as we call it, mm -hmm. has drastically reduced. Used. Okay. Um, secondly, uh, you don't need to pre-configure the machine. Windows 7, first of all, comes BitLocker ready, and even mm -hmm. if you don't have that system partition, we will do it. The BitLocker setup will do it for you. Oh, great. It'll yeah. create that without exactly. losing any data on exactly. my primary drive. Exactly. Okay. Do you want to show us some stuff? Sure. Okay. Uh, so let's do a quick demo with the removable data volume. Okay. So I'm just going to plug this into my machine, which is a Windows 7 machine. Uh -huh. um, and this, as soon as you plug it in, you'll get this prompt, which will say, which will give you two options, basically. One is you can encrypt your drive using BitLocker, and then you get read-write access. Otherwise, as it says, don't encrypt this drive right now, but you will only have read-only access. Okay, and this was defined by policy. We set this up a policy a pol that said we're only allowing uh, exactly. BitLocker encrypted exactly. drives. Exactly, exactly. So your administrator can say, I, I really want everything to be encrypted here. So let's say we go ahead and um, go with the BitLocker option, and we go ahead and, and try and encrypt the drive. Mm -hmm. So this is doing its initial initialization and setting up the volume. Now what you see here is two mechanisms that you can use to unlock your removable drive. Okay. Um, and these two options, that is a password as well as a smart card, is also available for your fixed data drives. Okay. Um, so in, in Windows Vista, we did not have these options, right. but in Win 7, you can. Okay. Um, let me also point out that in Windows Vista, you, there was a requirement that your OS volume had to be encrypted for you to encrypt your secondary drive. Okay. In Win 7, there is no such requirement. So All you right. can just independently encrypt one volume, not the other. Whatever combination you choose, you can go for it. Great. Um, so there are two options here. One is a password, which is an alphanumeric password, as we all know. Okay. And the other is a smart card. So you can also use your smart cards to encrypt your data volumes. Okay. You can encrypt it 
uh, your, your removable volumes as well as your uh, fixed volumes. So let's say I just go and type in my pass well, password in this case. I will just have to retype it to make sure it's all good. And as you can see, some of the settings are managed by my system administrator. These are the group policy settings that are pushed down onto my machine. Okay. Um, and I go ahead and click Next here. Um, and what it does is it's not going to prepare to start encryption, and that's pretty much it. Um, in this case, let me point out that I had set my policy settings such that a recovery password gets auto-generated for this drive. Mm -hmm. um, and similar to Windows Vista, it will get backed up to our Active Directory. Okay. So if I were to lose my password or forget my password, I can just call in my help desk and say, hey, this is the drive that I'm logged out of. Mm -hmm. Can you just give me my recovery password? And they'll give me my recovery password over the phone, and I can just type it out. Okay. Um, the other recovery option that we've introduced in Windows 7 is something called DRA, uh, which is a certificate-based recovery mechanism. Okay. Uh, it's similar to other encryption um, technologies, like EFS offers a DRA solution. It's exactly similar to that. Okay. You can have a certificate-based recovery option for your enterprise. Okay. As you can see here, this is going on. Our encryption is completing. Um, and this is really like a one-time tax that you would pay up front. Just the first time you, you, you dock exactly, this device. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Once it's encrypted, your, your experience is exactly how it would be with a normal stick. So you can drag, drop, you know, do whatever normal operations that you do with a removable drive. All right. And that's pretty much it. Except that what? The next time I plug this into another machine, I'm prompted for that password. Exactly. To we, we'll, okay. we'll see what happens once you plug it out and plug it back in, and it's okay. encrypted Perfect. now. Um, you, you'll probably note that at this point, you'll always have read-only access. So until encryption is complete, you don't get read-write access okay. to it. I can still use the drive. I can pull stuff off of it you until can. the encryption is done. Right. Okay. So as we can see, this is done. Next, I pull it out, and let's say I pull it, plug it back in. As soon as I plug it in, um, I get this prompt. Okay. And I retype my password, which I set earlier. And there you go. It'll unlock my drive for me, and that's it. Just so, and it, now it just looks seamless, exactly just like same, any other drive. Exactly same experience. There's no change there. Okay. The other thing that I wanted to show you is our group policy. We talked a little bit about uh -huh. our management um, solutions. So if you open the group policy editor, uh, these are the various group policy options that you will see. You go under the clocker. Um, one main thing that we've done is we've split the pol policy configurations per drive type. Okay. So you can, you can set independently what settings you want for your removable drive. Right, so you can force, um, using this policy, you can force the use of BitLocker on your, on your drive. Okay. Uh, you can choose what your password complexity and minimum length requirements So I can't set all those, okay. You can, yeah. Great. Right. Um, you know, what recovery options you want. You want a certificate, um, the DRA, the data recovery agent. You want a recovery password, recovery key. You want it to be backed up to Active Directory, all of that stuff. Okay. Uh, the other thing that we have is something called Manage BDE. Um, which is a command line tool to enable BitLocker. Uh, we had a script version of Manage BDE in Windows Vista. We've mm -hmm. made it into an executable in Windows 7. So anything that you can do with the UI, you can do using a command line, turn it on, turn it off, um, you know, set a password, add a smart card, whatever. Okay. Um, and you can, there's also a WMI interface for BitLocker that you can use to remotely configure, write scripts to it, and do anything. Okay, so, so I could script, you know, remote, all this exactly, remote management. Everything. Exactly. Great. You can check the status if I do um, a dash status here. You can see the state of BitLocker on this particular machine. So you can okay. see that the F drive is fully encrypted, and that's C okay. drive, which is my OS volume, I, I, I pre-encrypted it because that's the laptop. Okay. So that's what we've got for Windows 7. Um, in short. <laughs> uh, it really looks like this is pretty easy to set up and get it going. Exactly. So there is no special hardware that you would need. Whatever USB stick or any other drive that you probably use in your en enterprise today, you can just go ahead and BitLocker that. So there is no special hardware requirements as such. Um, if you already have an Active Directory set up in your enterprise, it's easy because your recovery password is getting backed up to your Active Directory. So as you can see, it's really simple. I mm -hmm. mean, we just encrypted a USB drive. It takes hardly any time. Yep. The wizard is clean and simple. That's All right. It. It's great. This is great. <laughs> Shalu, thanks for coming by. Thank you so much.